Today we're talking about the Nike Zoom X Dragonfly, a long distance track spike that I think has been the most unrivaled shoe from any sport over the past one and a half years. It pains me to give Nike more credit, but I have to as they've innovated in a division of running that has been stagnant for much of the past decade. They've innovated not only in the form of the Dragonfly, but also in the Zoom Victory and Max Fly spikes. Unlike carbon fiber plated road shoes, which provide notable advantage, the benefits you're getting from the Dragonfly is not quite as significant, but certainly progressing forward from the traditional track spike. What has made the Dragonfly that much more sought after is that it's had virtually no like for like competition. Only recently have Adidas, Asics and New Balance leveled the playing field by developing a super spike of their own. But prior to that, the Dragonfly stood apart from the next best option. Even athletes sponsored by Nike's competitor brands have been seen wearing blanked out versions of their track spikes. Nike have even played with this in a recent social media post, hinting at the fact that sponsored athletes of other brands wear concealed and blanked out versions of their track spikes. And as any good company does, they've turned it into good marketing. When we look at the design of the Dragonfly, we have a silhouette that's more cushioned and more responsive than your traditional racing slipper, and one that's less harsh on the body. Inside the shoe is a full length plastic plate visible from a side on view of the shoe. Unlike the Zoom, Victory and Maxfly which have carbon fiber plates, the Dragonfly opts for a plastic plate that is simply an extension of the track plate. In the Victory and Maxfly we have plates that are placed just below the foot, while the Dragonfly has a plate distal from the foot, presumably so it's less harsh. The plate is also going to stiffen up the shoe so that the shoe is nice and snappy, while also preventing the soft and responsive Zoom X cushioning from being too squishy on the tartan track. The Zoom X foam is really the key element behind the shoe, most of which is centered just behind the ball of your foot. You'll find that this throws you onto your toes, or conversely, if you're running at slow paces, you'll find that the heel drops off quite significantly. The shoe complies with World Athletics' 25mm maximum stackout limit, but of course this is per a shoe's US 9 measurements, so bigger sizes will exceed 25mm without it being an issue. Some other features of the shoe include this heel cutout so that your calcaneus can sit securely in the back of the shoe. You've also got some padding around the inside collar and a mesh that will work nicely if you want to go sockless. No gusseted tongue which is when the tongue is stitched or elasticized to the side of the shoe, but this also allows you to really open up the shoe when you get your foot inside. In terms of fit, the Dragonfly is quite squared compared with usually slim track spikes. I have a narrow foot and my foot slides in nicely, but if you have a slightly broader foot, the shoe should accommodate for it. Flipping the shoe over and we'll find a standard six point uh, track spike orientation with a heel piece uh, to provide protection and grip at the back. Compared with the Zoom Victory, the Dragonfly is more cushioned and doesn't quite throw you as much on your toes as what the Victory does. The Victory is also slightly less forgiving underfoot, making it more suitable for 800 and 1500 meter distances. Between the Zoom Victory and the Dragonfly, the Dragonfly is the more versatile shoe. It is able to race anywhere between 1500 meter and 10,000 meter track distances. I find it does a good job over 800 meter distances as well. Um, plus training in the shoe is a little bit more forgiving, making it a good racing and training companion. That wraps up this video. If you enjoy talking about shoes like I do, subscribe to this channel and tune in next week for a new video. Until then, cheers.